Actually, the, the original script for Beyond Fury was uh, written, uh, completed in 2000, two years after Sudden Fury was completed, but um, it's very different to what's on the screen. The original, there's a lot of elements still in that movie, but um, if we were going to shoot it in the year 2000, Nick would have looked very much similar, would have still had the hair, not put on the white, and we could have gone straight at the end of Sudden Fury, because at the end of Sudden Fury, I don't know if you've seen it, he takes on a great big drugs gang and he ends up having a sort of stand-up instead of on horses like a like a western. They're both in cars, they machine gun each other, and he's just left sort of, you know, tossing and throwing around in the car blood everywhere. The credits come up. So it was like, do we ever do a sequel? I didn't I didn't think he was dead. Walker's a bit like those um uh, Michael Myers and uh, and and, and <laughs> you know Jason Voorhees. They can get shot, hacked, stabbed. He, he's all right. He's he, he's fine. He just carries on. He's bulletproof. Um, so, in answer to your question, um, when a, a Day of Violence was finished, and you know that, that got released 2010, um, I did sort of dig out the script, and I w always knew in the back of my mind. Well, I think I said it from a Day of Violence, it would be a trilogy. So. But it takes so long, and, and uh, you know, the day of violence was two and a half years, and it's not like a, 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 um, a sob story, but I mean, my whole adult life, I've always had a full-time job. I do IT for the NHS, and I have done for 29 years. I have a family, <laughs> mortgage, and all that lot. So um, it's very difficult as an independent to um, find yourself sat on a pot of money. Hey, guys, let's go and make a movie and shoot it four, six, eight weeks. No, 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 no. I, I took the script and it's like, okay, what can we shoot for practically nothing? So, you know, let's shoot at my house and do the dialogue stuff. So, where um, Gemma's stitching up Walker at the, uh, at the house and they go back and, you know, she gets uh, abducted. You know, it's a free location because it's my house. So, we, we shot that over a long weekend and then suddenly, mentally, ah, oh, I've got a bit of a movie. And you edit that scene together, oh, I've got the first five minutes of my new movie. And, and suddenly, they, you know, they're creative juices and everyone's sort of, right, what can we do next? And that's how I start. I start with the easy stuff because, as I kind of, like, alluded to earlier, it's trying to get blood out of a stone. I, I find, for me, anyway, as an independent filmmaker, uh, I know some people find it a bit easier to, to get the money, but it's never come easy f uh, for me. So, it, you know, it, it takes time. And a, a lot of my um, cast and crew... A lot of the other guys that aren't here tonight, they, they work in the industry full time, so they could be, you know, the other side of the world when I'm, let's come to sunny Southampton and shoot a sequence on a weekend and you try and get 20, 30 people together and you phone round everyone and 29 people have said, yeah, I can do that Saturday. And the last person you phone who's essential for the shoot can't make it. So, you, you know, it, it's just, it goes on and on and on and on and on like that. Um, it was Partly self-finance, we did a couple of um, Indiegogo campaigns. You can see, the, I called them Indiegogo angels. There were people that, you know, uh, chucked us a few quid. And um, luckily, luckily, my, my uh, pyro guy, who's done all three films with me, um, Alistair, he was Alistair Vardy. He was over uh, the last few years doing Game of Thrones. So he wasn't available, but through Alistair, through someone on Game of Thrones, we got the, the rest of the money we needed to complete the film. So... You know, it, it was a happy ending to that. Uh, so, yeah, usually 10 years because, like, now, like, uh, here we are at the festival. We've still got two months or, or so of, of post-production to do. What you'll see, uh, the finished product will be a much heavier grade. It will look a lot deeper, a lot richer. Uh, the sound will be a lot more broader. I mean, it's just stereo. We, 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 we haven't had chance yet because there was a lot of uh, post-production to do uh, visual effects-wise as well. Uh, we haven't had chance yet to sort of, uh, you know, lift the audio, get it sounding correct with all the right room tones. So, so it's a basic, it's a finished picture. I will tell you actually, because we screened last month in Germany, and we had a little bit of feedback. Um, the version you've seen, the version that will be out, will be at least a minute or so shorter than that. We've already taken some, uh, cut down a that some of the dialogue scene, uh, the MI5 sequence with the two police and the MI5 guy. So that's actually a minute or so shorter. Um, but um, 
I'm not intending. And I always, in the back of my mind, I always wanted maybe possibly <laughs> two versions. You know, I remember growing up and you'd get the international cut of a movie and then the European cut of the movie. Look at Dawn of the Dead and, and, and things like that. Well, let's have a completely different version. I, I don't know now whether we'd do that. We'd probably just stick with what I'm calling the director's cut. I mean, that is that is the cut, basically. Um, so. They, they, we went through quite a lot of blood, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, looking at it now, I'm thinking, oh, we could have put a bit more in, but um, we ran out of money. I mean, if you look at the scripts, and I'm sorry, I'm just going on and on here. I'll go on all night now that, you know, um, uh, there's quite a bit of uh, action that we ultimately, we couldn't put in the movie because, you know, X amount only goes so far. You know, if we had more, we could have done more. Uh, so, you know, there's a few sequences that would have, you know, it's just quite frustrating, but I'm not going to go into that because you guys are never going to know what should have been on the screen. But there are certain things. Yeah, there's a little squibs. You know, uh, action movies to me, they need fire. We'd love to have done a, we, you know, a big stunt sequence with flames and burns, but, you know, do it on the next one. Yeah, 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 we'll just be... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the last movie we had car smash-ups and people burning and stuff so yeah, whether you do it every time and repeat I don't know but um, yeah so every 10 years because once you've done uh, you're absolutely rinsed we started at the first scene we shot was at the church the church sequence and that was April 2015 that was our start date and we finished shooting on the 28th of November 2018 so since the 28th of November Chris now Thorpe is our visual effects guy. Chris has been doing all the work, the visual effects, the sound, uh, the grade, the color, e everything that's, that's coming from Chris. Uh, so he's been on that. Uh, we, as I say, we've got a couple of months to go. Uh, I wanted to have a couple of test screenings, Germany and Spencer sort of, you know, asked us to come to Romford and I thought, well, excellent, great, because uh, even knowing we've got a couple of months to go, let's just put it out there. And see what feedback we get because we're still in a stage where you know from Germany I've, I've made a couple of, of cuts and I think it's you know great to be able to do it now rather than it be out and you know so but the, uh, you know doing it independent with full-time job and all the rest of it after I finish the movie and you've done that couple of years of festival circuit oh, you, just <laughs> you need a few couple of years just to get over it or I, I do anyway and then then you, then you start writing then you start trying to find money before you know it, four or five years have gone. And then, oh God, we've got a two or three year shoot, or how we have been on the last few, you know, last couple of movies. Uh, so no, for me now, um, I've done a trilogy of features. Uh, I've done shorts. We've, you know, been lucky to screen in the biggest sort of festivals around the wor world over the, over the years, you know, uh, Cannes, Citrus, Fanta Sporta, Rain Dance, places like that. Um, I want more money. I don't want to keep, I know how far, 30 grand goes, I know how far 50 grand goes, I know how far, you know, on and on. We need a lump of money, you need, you know, so you can just really make a difference, because every film you make as a director, and as, a, as an actor, and, you know, you want to do better every time, you don't want to just keep treading water, there's no point. Um, so for me, uh, I know how far I can go on micro budget, so un unless I can get a, we're not talking millions, I'm not being silly, you know, couple of hundred thousand, great, let's shoot in eight weeks and let's, you know, bring in a masterpiece. I mean, that, that movie cost 32 grand, that's 32,000 pounds on the screen. Most, no one got paid, you know, paid, all, all, all the money is in the locations uh, in what you see on the screen. So, you know, hopefully it looks a lot bigger than 32,000 pounds. Uh, but yeah, I'm waffling, does anyone? <laughs> but great question, thank you for, for listening to my waffle. Any other questions? Now to Gary, because I've got to ask Gary. A oh, he's got one. He's got one. Gary, I've got one. I've got to ask you a question. Go so, for it. because I remember a Facebook post you wrote several years ago. What is it like to work with your legends? Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic, because you know um, my partner's been putting actors and and legends from film and TV into Comic-Cons for years. So I've had a chance to meet a lot of legends, you know. Um, I've got Robert Englund's 
signature on my Freddy Krueger tattoo is a nice shining moment. They're just people. They're just like us. They're just human beings. You know, you sit with these people. You've grown up watching them on TV. You've grown up watching them in films. They're just, they're just like you. You know, there's no airs and no graces, and it's just ultimately you're there to get Darren's vision on the screen. You know, Giovanni was awesome. We were already friends. Thankfully, we'd met before. Um, but when Darren said, I mean, originally I was just going to be an extra in the movie. I was just going to get squibbed in the, f in the final shootout. So I was always going to be in Beyond Fury, and that was great. And then I'd actually started becoming an actor. And Darren threw me a bone and said, I've got a better role for you. And told me I was going to be playing alongside Giovanni. And, and yeah, I pinched myself a few times and, and jumped for joy. And uh, had a celebratory gin and tonic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we did have a few sort of cast changes over the years. Originally, we had um, Michael Berryman lined up for the, the, the character of Sponge. Um, and uh, that didn't work out with uh, scheduling and the crazy way we were shooting the movie. Like, we, we, we shoot a scene now. <laughs> and then three months' time, we need Sponge back. So the actor, Anthony Strager, that played Sponge, he actually lived in, in, in Germany. So he's coming over from Berlin to shoot and stuff. And we had a couple of the, the other Italian greats. Uh, if you, you know, if you, if you loved your Italian uh, uh, splat, splatter, we had um, Bobby Rhodes lined up, who was in Demons and Demons Two, and a lot of sort of Rambo ripoffs that the Italians did. Uh, we also had Barbara Capisti lined up, um, um, who was going to be playing the character of Arabella Andrews. But again, through uh, scheduling, uh, we we couldn't lock dates. So um, by a Spencer. I saw Spencer's trailer for Death Walks a couple of years back, and I thought, oh, I, I like the look of this lady. I think she's, you know, she's going to be, she'd be great. So I got phone Spencer out of the blue. Hi, Spencer, you don't know me, but blah, 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 blah. blah. Oh, you want to kind of nick my actress? Okay. Uh, so um, gave me Joe's details, and uh, we, had a, we had a long chat. And as you say, I guess the rest is history, because I spoke to Joe, and She's in the movie, and um, do you want to say a little bit about the, how that come about, Joe, or what your experiences on the film? Say something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, he, um, yeah, he wrote me a very, very long message, um, and he was quite convincing, so I said yes. And actually, my very first day of shooting, um, it was the MI5 scene, and I had just come back from India the day before, and I was super jet lagged and I was all like spiritual and you know, I was on, like in my own world. And then boom, like shooting this scene, talking about like dead bodies and all that. But um, no, it's been a great experience. I mean, um, I shot another movie with, with um, that took quite a while to, um, to shoot. That was Death Walks with Spencer. Um, so I'm kind of used to very, very long uh, films. But hey, Linklater took 14 years to make Boyhood and then he got nominated for an Oscar, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> exactly, but you never know. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it was, um, I had a great time, yeah, and everybody was, um, was lovely to work with, so, yeah. Yeah, well great. I mean, it, um, I'm going to pass this along because I'm hogging it, but, um, like with these guys, some of these guys sat here, uh, you know, I've been working with, um, oh, Nick's not here. Oh, actually, <laughs> Nick, Nick was due to be here, uh, who plays Walker, but um, he, he's on Wales, so we couldn't make it. But Nick and I have done six movies together, and the first one we did was oh, 1993. Um, so, kind of like that, dare I say it, I'm going to say it, but um, we're kind of like that Scorsese De Niro of micro budget. <laughs> we sort of like did a couple of movies together, got on well, we, and, and uh, he's just been my leading man since, you know. Uh, but I think, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do now uh, in, in terms of that. But all these guys here have been, like, with Dave Andrews, our music. Dave, put your hand up, please. Dave scores, is the second movie Dave scored for me. Dave scored A Day of Violence as well. Um, and uh, worked with Chris before and, uh, and, and Dean here. Can we... Can we and Bo. Talk yeah. about Bo, Bo right now. Yeah, and Bo here. This, this Bo this Townsend. Man, yeah. um, our special effects wizard on this movie. Um, literally, I had been at a, um, uh, a film expo in Southampton, and it was the first one uh, about, what, three years ago, Bo? Yeah. And Bo was there as part of a, a, a group tank full of effects, and um, I was sort of like walking around, I was looking at a few bits and pieces they, they, they had, and 
as it turned out, Bo was the only one out of the group that lived in Southampton, so it worked out well for him. It was like, right, I, I, you know, let's, I'll come over to your place. We'll talk about the effects that I want for the movie. And, um, and again, uh, Bo will go into this in a minute, but everything you see on the screen, testament to Bo's uh, brilliant work, He'd never done any of this before. He hadn't con done any of the special effects you've seen, so literally it was baptism by fire. I saw something in Bo, and I just thought, yeah, I, I know he can do it, so it's just throw him in the deep end. And the first splatter scene was the feet, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, that, that was the first uh, real gory scene. Yeah, yeah, uh, but if you, you take over, you can tell the guys <laughs> about it. You know. So um, if I remember rightly, I think it was more over four years ago I first met you at the... Film Expo. I thought it was free. It was four. Okay, so it was four years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and funny enough, the first scene we did, um, I, I, was, I came into it thinking I was going to be doing a black eye makeup. Didn't really know a huge amount about the scene. Um, I thought, you know, it was a bit of beating up and some torture. And it turned out to be uh, Gemma's rape scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was... <laughs> so that uh, that yeah. was a baptism of <laughs> that. Yeah, that was a baptism for everyone, I think. Um, and then I think after that, it was the feet that got smashed with a hammer. And yeah. uh, I think it was three different gags we did in that day. It was the them getting smashed up, the cigarette burn on the cheek, yeah. and then the tongue being cut out. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, in testament to, to, to Bo, I mean, we had the silicon f outer feet for the skin. There was, like, fiberglass and bone structure underneath and nails on there. And we packed each foot with about a pound and a half of meat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, literally, you just you know, Giovanni whacked it with a hammer, and it went about 30 feet. There was just meat flying all around this um, MOT uh, garage that we filmed in. It, was, it <laughs> took more time to clean their white walls than it, <laughs> than it did anything else. But, Dar um, Darren, can we talk about the fact that we spent hours cleaning that garage after killing those feet, and then they went and repainted that floor <laughs> bit anyway? Yeah. They painted it red. Actually, I'd, yeah, I'd forgotten all about that. We were so paranoid, thinking, oh, shit, we've got to film in here again in probably about a year's time, the time we get round to it. We can't leave it like, an, you know, like a tip. So we spent hours. Shannon went out and was getting all the baby wipes, and we got it spotless. I went in a few days later to say, you know, thanks, guys, and can we still shoot at another time? The bastards had painted the whole place. So we could have left meat dripping off the ceiling, and it wouldn't have mattered, but... <laughs> You know, we tidied up after ourselves. <laughs> so, yeah, that is quite similar. So we, um, we took a life cast of Gary's head, um, then recreated that in a silicon uh, for the flesh, and then a fiberglass underskull. And uh, that was then filled with, oh, I can't remember how much we went through, probably two packets of mincemeat, <laughs> filled it, loaded it with blood. And crisps. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Apples. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bits of pineapple. Anything that looked chunky and meaty. And then, uh, yeah, we took it down. And I th a lot of, of the, well, all of these effects that you've seen, they were all one take wonders. We only had one opportunity to get it done. Um, there was no time, or really, there wasn't really enough funding for testing and stuff like that. You know, a lot of money could be poured into this. So it was kind of, we had to just grab the bull by the horns and do it in one, you know. And luckily, I think we I think we got him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I'm very, very pleased with it. Absolutely. What did you guys think of the effects work? <laughs> okay, I think they like it, basically. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Oh yes. Ah. Oh, that's um, a funny story. That <laughs> here's one. a story for you. That yeah. That was actually, yeah, that was my car, the, uh, um, the Honda that Walker's driving. Now, picture the scene. We've, <laughs> we, we are just about to, or we've just filmed Richie getting his arm macheted off, okay? Now, Bo turns up with this uh, fire extinguisher or, um, and an um, electric car charger. <laughs> so plug this in your car, he says, and it will put all the air pressure into the, uh, into the fire extinguisher. All right, so I'm sat in the front of my car. <laughs> in there, shh, 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 shh. was it a hundred psi, two hundred yeah. psi? Anyway, about five hundred psi. Are we ready, Bo, to take the connections off? Yes, he says. Bang! The whole thing <laughs> exploded in my car, 
literally for months, I'd do the windows up, blood would just come up. It'd be like the, ha- like the car that dripped blood. Forget uh, the house that dripped blood. And I took it down to an MOT, and I forgot also at the back there was like loads of like meat and, 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 and stuff. So the guy went, uh, that's fake blood, right? I was like, yeah, you're okay, mate. I didn't actually kill anyone in it. But it's literally, it was everywhere. It just went, boom. If anyone had a photo of that, that would have been bloody priceless. But um. yeah, we should have, um, if you guys me afterwards, we should have taken the opportunity to somehow work that into the film. You know, we could have had someone get shot in the head in the car, oh, and then possibly. we had the, uh, the yeah. aftermath right there. Yeah, 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 Pulp here. Yeah. But, you know, it was a, touching on what um, Bo was saying, or Gary was saying, it was a real pleasure to work with, you know, screen legends like uh, Giovanni. Uh, it's the second time I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to work with him. And... Um, yeah, you know, uh, it's like anything. You know, you grow. I mean, I grew up watching these guys on the TV. So when I finally met them, let alone sort of like coerce them into being in my movies, you know, obviously it's a dream come true. And you kind of think, oh God, but now you soon forget it, and you start telling them, don't do it like that. Don't. You know, they just become one of the one of you know one of the, uh, the cast. But no, they're great because every any time there's a downtime, they just regale you with stories of working with. You know, this director, that director, you know, working, you know, when we worked with David Warbeck, we, I, I'd get stories from, you know, uh, Fistful of Dynamite working with Sergio, uh, Sergio Leone. So, um, yeah, that's perfect. And again, with Dan, you know, he, he would just, he did 26 Spaghetti Westerns, so he would just tell you stories of him and Franco Nero getting up to no good. Uh, on, on the sets, but I can't, <laughs> I, can't, I can't really repeat any of those stories to go down on camera. I have to talk about that one over a beer. But, um, Conscious of the other guys here, guys, just 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 chip in and tell your story. Well, I was um, I was at work and I got a phone call saying, um, would I come down for a bit of a shoot? So I said, yeah, why not? So um, I met down the golf course for the first scene. That was good about a year and a half ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was a little while ago. Um, and it was an enjoyable experience, and to see myself on the screen today was quite funny, I must admit. It's an experience, but um, yeah, it's been fun. And the, the last, the, the um, final scene, the final scenes was um, the shootouts. Was it was a gr- great laugh, absolutely great laugh, great fun. Yeah. Uh, well, it was a, a day of violence, wasn't it? And you, I believe, you wanted me to build you a yeah, you wanted me to build you. Uh, Bathroom suite for Nick to get shot in. Yeah, and then I, I turned up and you just ended up going, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> That's it. So you shot me in the toilet twice. <laughs> no, 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 just it, it, Darren didn't want it in the end. You, you did it. Uh, wait. That's it. But he, he had me on the phone and he, he goes, do, do, you want me to, uh, do you want me to kill you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, and that's, that's it. And I've done this one and I've had a, the time of my life. So thank you very much. And it's a great movie. Thank you. Hello, hello. Thank you. They're, they're, they're new for the occasion. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so um, the first time I met Darren um, and Mike, they, they covered my head in plaster of Paris in the, his shed, um, which scared the life out of me at first. I didn't know them at all. I thought, <laughs> I thought what, what, have I, what have I let myself in for? And, um, but no, I absolutely loved it. I love working with them. Uh, it's the first feature film I've done. Um, uh, I got, got, got shot in the chest and my head, and my head uh, shot, which is great, which thanks to Bo. And Bo was kind enough to send me the... The plaster, the plaster cast, which is in my little studio at home. Um, I've had a great time. It's a great film. The first time I've seen it, absolutely fantastic. Loved every minute of it. Being a massive horror fan myself. Um, I live in Whitstable, just up the road from Peter Cushing's house. Um, you know, I've, I've grown up watching horror, splatter, all the same stuff Darren did. Um, so I think we've been to the same, same, some of the same, uh, you know, all nighters. Lu- met Lucio Fulci. Oh, exactly, without even knowing it, um, Argento, Romero, whatever, all the greats. Um, so to work on it was absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. That's what can I say? Um, brilliant. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll work on it again sometime. And here's uh, Dave. Hello. Um, 
first time me and Darren spoke was on the phone in about 94 or something. That was via David Warbeck. And that never happened. That was for Southern Fury, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was, it, it was a quite a strange story because I'd forgotten about that, hadn't I? And when we I know. started doing a day of violence, you were telling me, I sent you a demo back in for Southern Fury. I was, was like, did you? Yeah, I mean, then we never spoke for about 20 years or 15 years or something and then ended up via Giovanni catching up on day of violence and doing that film. It was like destiny, wasn't it? it yeah, was it was mad. You know, when you're supposed to beat someone, I thought it was really cool. But um, flash forward to now... Um, there's so much kind of in, in the film world and low budget film world, there's so much ego and stuff like that. But I'd just like to say that it's a testament to all you and Darren's tenacity as a filmmaker to get these films done because most people just talk. Very few people actually do and see it through. So many people just talk about doing something and never get around to doing it. But well done, Darren. Thank really you very much, man. Thank really you. Good. Thank and you. Well done to everyone else as well. Absolutely fantastic job, everybody. And I'm going to pass you over to Chris now. Hi, uh, my name's Chris, Chris Northrop. I did the visual effects and the colour grading for Beyond Fury. I uh, first met Darren four years ago for yeah. the first shoot, wasn't it, via John, our cameraman? Yeah, came down on the, ch the church sequence, didn't you? And, That's uh, right. And Chris, uh, yeah, John says, yeah, I've got, I'm, I'm going to bring someone down that can just sort of, you know, give us a bit with the, with the, with the grade and, and, the, and, the, and the look and sort of Chris come down and I think after we'd even the, the first couple of takes you were there with your laptop showing me what you could do with the, with the colour yeah, grade, right. weren't you? That's right, yes, it was the shot from behind Dan when he's kneeling at the pulpit. Yeah. I think, yeah, we did that. That was the first shot that we did. And it was kind of like, here you go, Darren, do you want it? For me, I, to that point on the previous two movies, um, you know, I, yeah, we've given it a grade, but it was like, Bit of contrast, bit of bit of brightness, bit of this, but so when you know when Chris was able to you know show what someone who knows what they're doing with <laughs> with grading and uh, colouring and all the rest of it, it, it's just you know and we shot on the Black Magic camera, so we shot on a two and a half K raw image uh, with prime film lenses as well. So you know we we started off with a great picture, but where Chris has been able to take it, and I've got a lot of, um, like some sequences, like Chris would send me four or five variations with real sh different dynamic color shifts and tones, and it's like, oh God, which one do we go, do we go with? Um, and, and that we've still got to iron out in the, in the next couple of months, really, is, is to get the grade locked and, you know, and <laughs> pick where we're going with it. And That's yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Over to you again. Uh, no, I was gonna say, um I would just like to point out that with the RAW, we, John came to me and he said, I want to do this feature film and I want to do it in RAW. And I went, um, that's a lot of data we've got to deal with. And we, me and Darren have been shuttling this back and forth. Uh, just to <laughs> jump in quickly, just when I exported my finished film file for the last film, A Day of Violence, to give to uh, sales agents, etc., it was just under 100 gig. This movie, I've got eight terabytes full of information because uh, uh, we shoot a lot. Um, uh, we, sh we do a lot of coverage because I, I like to be able to go anywhere in the edit. Not because you don't know what you're doing, written down on your scene, but in the edit, uh, you, can, you, know, you can really go places if you've got the coverage. So, yeah, we, 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 we work hard and... Uh, yeah, we, you, know, we, you know, we get it done, so... Uh. We do. The last thing I'd say about doing the visual effects on a, on a Ward movie is it's great you haven't got to do anything, because he shoots everything for real. You know, he's, it's, all <laughs> it's all the real blood. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, do anything. Yeah. It's great. We, we, we didn't want to go down, you know, uh, CG blood route and stuff like that. Um, so, it, uh, yeah, that was the catchphrase. It's like, oh, look, look at that in the corner. Oh, don't worry about that. Chris would just get rid of it and post. <laughs> oh, look, it's raining. It's snowing. Let's just shoot. It doesn't matter. Chris can make it look sunny. Uh, <laughs> so by the end of it, Chris was sort of like, I don't want to hear we do it in post anymore. Thank you. <laughs> so we just used to do it to wind him up anyway. <laughs> we'll do that in post. It's a pound in the pot every time you say it. Yeah. I'll pass you on to Chris. Oh, oh, yeah, I, um, I edit on Final Cut. I've got Final Cut on the Mac, so I basically um, I do the edit uh, with the proxies, with Crush. And I then 
send the um, XML, the timeline, to Chris, and Chris's supercomputer then rebuilds it off the raw files. This goes... Uh, it just cannot handle it, whereas Chris's uh, can. So basically, yeah, I do the edit, goes up to Chris. Chris, uh, you know, uh, finesses it sometimes, does a little bit, or, or let's try this, let's try that, and uh, we, we bounce ideas around. Um, but ultimately, yeah, um, it, it, the finished picture is, is lies with Chris. Uh, I used uh, Adobe After Effects. Yeah, do all the color grading and all the effects work. Just keeps it all in one place, you know, rather than send it out to resolve or just keep it all in one place. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty powerful system, so it works works nicely. Right, you want to Chris? Go on, Mr. Go on, Richie. Um, ah, I was going to say, working with Darren. Uh, this is second film, um, even in the last second film I've worked on with Darren. Obviously, I worked with, uh, in a day of violence. Uh, I met Darren through a mutual friend of Alistair, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah, friend, um, I played Big Chris in a day of violence. And one, one, one scene, and I died straight away. A hail of bullets. A club but sequence, uh, but it was then, good. Um, yeah, so then uh, sort of me and Darren became sort of quite good friends. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah you're all right, yeah. Yeah, we came quite good friends, and I had a few beers in the evening, and then we'd say, well, I've got this other film, I've got this other film, I'm going to do this other film, it's going to be the, the, the trilogy. And then, um, yeah, and after a while, he said, I'll you started showing me bits of scripts, pop up, and he'll show me the script on paper, and then uh, all of a sudden, it would build and build and build, and then he'd have this um, board on his wall, and it would have all these scene one, scene two, scene three. So anyway, he wrote me in, the, wrote me in this, uh, as Richie, which is... Uh, Actually, amazing for me because obviously I've, I've been acting quite a long time. So this is the actual second feature, third feature film I've done. But this is feature. This feature was the character was more prominent than I've ever done before. If you know what I mean. So anyway, I've um, yeah, I worked with Darren. We did uh, did all the scenes. We did the uh, the golf course scene first. I think we did. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah because yeah, we had Giovanni come yeah, over in yeah. two uh, two periods. He came over in 2016, um, and we did the cage <laughs> sequence, um, the golf course sequence, and the swimming sequence. Sequence, and then he came over in 2017, and we we did another five days with him and and, and, and finished all his scenes. Uh, so yeah, I mean he he's been out of the pictures. Well, for two years now. I mean, that's how crazy it is when I look at it now. I just think, God, um, you know, we shot that scene in 2015 and the scene immediately after it. Oh, we shot that in 2018 and it, lucky, always be, the continuity works, I think. Uh, there's nothing too glaring there. Maybe a few waistlines expand and get thinner and go up again over the years, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so it was like, amazing, not obviously working with you as well. The, um, and Darren, actually, because we did a cast of my arm as well, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And you sat there, all the first experience was handed a bucket of um, house of flour. What they cast your teeth with, you know, they, you, you put then, your arm in that. Yeah, and then the, 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 the second time wasn't as comfortable because I had a, a face mask made and it's so heavy. And mm. it's with the move, but you can't move. And you've got straws up your nose and you yeah, can't you stay perfectly still. For the, no, um, you didn't. No. We, did, we didn't like you. We just... <laughs> Um, I got, I got, uh, yeah. But, but, but anyway. when Chris got the machete in the face before the eyes got gouged out, literally, um, Bowood created uh, Chris's face. So on Chris's real face were metal plates covering uh, his eyes, and then we put his face back on top of his face. So for like three hours, Chris is blind. He doesn't know what's going on. He can just feel this pressure of thumbs being pushed on his, on his eyes. Uh, and I think at the end of it, it got a little bit kind of claustrophobic for you, didn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, like, so he like cried. Was about, I didn't cry. <laughs> no, he didn't <laughs> cry. But uh. it was about. It was. It was literally. <laughs> oh, he's just yeah. taking the yeah. pitch faces and names on his. You know, like you do yeah, when you're having fun. It was fun, actually. It was actually nearly three hours. I couldn't see. Literally, could not. I could not open my eyes or couldn't do. I couldn't see anything. So obviously, cut it onto set. And then, um, yeah, I was at the mercy of you guys, but um. Yeah, having your eyes poked out by Nick. 
So, yeah, you know, it's yeah, been yeah. a very colourful and windy road these last 24 years. But, you know, no, it's great to be here. It's great to sort of be able to show uh, your movie on home turf, you know. Um, we've always done pretty well um, abroad. The Germans really like the, the movies. They, it, they've always done really well in Germany and Austria. Limited edition box sets, this and media books and... So now, eventually, what I the aim of the game is um, is we don't show the movie again now uh, until post-production is completely uh, compl uh, finished, and then we we'll hit the rest of the festivals that are still going for this year. Seek distribution, um, go to Cannes next year, and film markets like that. Um, but yeah, you know, one fight, one long fight, and hard slog is over. But you know. Uh, Another one starts because it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's so difficult. I haven't made a movie in 10 years. So what the marketplace is like now in terms of physical media versus VOD and download, I, I, you know, I just don't know what, what is out there. So we, we will see. We will see. But um, it, would be nice, think it would be nice to be able to see it, though, for, for yeah. a lot of British, British, um, a British audience to see it. So whether we'd get a Netflix or a <laughs> <laughs> Amazon <laughs> Prime sort of... VOD, I, I, I very much doubt it. I, I really don't know. We, we've got to cross that bridge as we come. What did you guys... Eh? In the Horror Channel, yeah. It's a bit, bit low rent, mate, isn't it? Horror Channel. But um, what did you guys think of... Um, this is really, f for me, feedback for me. So please, you know, I, I'm not precious, so you can be blunt if you didn't, you know, like certain things. Tell me. Uh, d did it work for you? Did you did you get the you no know, story part of the story didn't make sense to you? Did did you get everything? Did you understand everything? D did it did it work for you basically? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Ever hold your tongue now. Oh no, Mike's going to say yes, Mike. Thank you for asking, Bobby. Uh, day one, but to see on the screen with the soundtrack. Those transitions, those three clear chapters. Those yeah. transitions from that chapter, chapter, chapter. Yeah. Uh, spot on. Yeah. yeah. So it really did feel like there was an arc, there was character, there was a story. Mm -hmm. uh, it just felt, it, it wasn't just set piece, filler, set piece. I felt like there was an arc there. That yeah. I mean, I mean, if I could just jump in there, Mike. I mean, uh, 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 you know, uh, over, over the years, you, you, you get negative feedback and reviews and th that that's fine because everyone's got an opinion I and mean, it's great but I you know it, it did niggle me a couple of times that people go oh the, the, in the wards universe of in, in, in mayhem there never seems to be any police on the scene so we rectified that on this one so yes it makes it longer but it also gave me the opportunity to um with the other two movies, uh, I didn't really, you know, it was set piece, set piece, set piece, really. Everything was building to the next set piece. There was no sort of time just to breathe. So, as Mike said, and speaking to Dave when we were sort of discussing where we're going with the music, uh, for me, there was three distinctive parts of the film. They, they all kind of happen to be around 40 minutes. The first 40 minutes is the abduction, and there's Walker again, and getting to see what's happening there but there's a distinct when he's been stitched up and where you go and then he says hunting bang with a drink dum, dum, dum. and then that the music really kicks in as we go over the golf course that is like going into chapter two and chapter two is all about Lenzovich and Arabella and Detective Scott it's what are these guys doing and getting a, to know a little bit more than uh, of Lenzovich's world rather than, oh, look, it's Lenzovich, he's the bad guy. It's just to show a bit of that, you know, and let it breathe and, 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 and just let the characters develop. And then, of course, um, you know, once you get to the, uh, the final part of uh, the cage scene after the, the, the rape sequence and you get the soprano on the soundtrack and then it kicks in to Walker doing, you know, killing skank, going to the club, the finale. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, so, so they, they were the three distinct sort of point chapters, chapters of the movie, the movie yeah. that, that Mike's, Mike's talking, talking about there. there. Uh, I think it was your best pacing, yeah. And also, gore-wise, your closest to Fulci, definitely. Thank you, man. I'll take that. I'll take that. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah, it seemed to have a nice arc in the, in the, the speed of how it went. In the beginning, very slow, the bottom goal. Mm. Very 
this is live here, is what he's doing, and then it slowly, it starts to speed up, and, yeah. and then of course at the end, it's just boom, 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 boom. Brilliant, um, yeah, I'm glad you, Picked up. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's like Simon, I'm not trying to be pretentious. I mean, you yeah, know, we're a bunch of guys in the UK making a movie. Not, we're not in Italy, we're not here, we're not there. But just the way we approached it, we just try to get a European feel to it. I know that sounds, I can't quite explain it, but to me, when I watch that, that does not resemble a, your typical British gangster movie. Well, they would probably start the blood probably in the first. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, is, it, it has got a more laid back. Uh, uh, tempo to it, and, and that is, I just, you know, want you to feel these characters, you know, rather than like, he goes there to the, it's just take the time and, you know, let him walk across the room, watch him leave the room, you know. Uh, yeah, that does, I think that's a lost art, in the sense of, like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm from Canada, so I see, a, I, I'm inundated with the North American idea, the Tarantino idea of, of this kind of genre and, and and yeah it's and they always say oh it's got to have blood in the first minute well no it doesn't you got to know who your characters are you got to know we waited to the, the fifth minute, minute for blood didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> you know we, we gave it a couple of extra minutes but no i know what you're saying i mean you kind of got to kick off the story with something that's going to grab someone so you don't want it, you don't want the event to be too far into it and absolutely so you know that it, it pays off that, you know, this is a guy that has his past, his life is like this now, and then this shit happens. Absolutely, I'm, I'm so pleased you sort of, you know, let's just hit home for you, because, you know, that, that's what it is. And I also, I didn't say it beforehand, yeah, it's got a long credit sequence, and the reason for that being, again, it goes back to my, it's a homage, my love to spaghetti westerns, basically. They're all very colourful. You get the bad and the ugly, a few dollars more, um, you had, had Eastwood's, Eastwood's face, face up, up Lee Van Cleef, Eli Wallach, Wallach and, and you know, and their, their names, names would come up and talking to Chris and uh, I think I'm, you, was it 15 months to get yeah. the credit, credit sequence? sequence? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it was, was months and months and months. And months, and months. months. I'm, I'm not, not saying, you know, know obviously, obviously it's not out yet, yet but, but <laughs> when it is out, if you were to pause the credit sequence, every character, there are 24 photos of their life that flash up and Chris, Chris created, created fake, fake uh, military, military documents, documents redacted military documents, um, all, all sorts, sorts to give every character a background. So, so when you eventually get it on Blu-ray, 4K, 4K whatever, do you pause, pause that credit sequence, sequence frame, frame by frame, frame, and you'll see the lives of every character in photos. But it passes like, like that when you watch it. But go back and... Yeah, yeah, it was just like little Easter eggs, and it, 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 and for me, you know, movies now, yeah, it's fine, don't get me wrong, go straight into a movie, have your credits at the end, but no, I, you know, I'm, I, was, I was coming from the point of, if, it, if this is the last movie I ever make, because I don't get budgets, and I, as I said before, I'm not going through the how that we went through to get this movie done, it's just, you know, <laughs> I'll be dead. Um, but I wanted to give something back. So there's that long credit sequence, which is you know, the homage to the, the, the spaghetti westerns, basically. And um, yeah, Chris absolutely nailed it. Uh, um, and, but like, uh, I think as Mike said, it's one thing to watch a movie. You watch your favorite movie in the world, be it Jaws, Star Wars, whatever, you pick it, and now take the music off it. What have you got? Okay, you might still have a... It's, but you haven't got a movie, um, so when Dave <laughs> sent through the first few minutes, I, I think I almost passed out. I was just like, oh man, you know, I've lived with this script from the year 2000 and we revamped it in 2012. But for four years we've been filming and I've been watching these scenes and I've been, every night I would just fall asleep, I'd just fall asleep dreaming what I'm going to shoot next and every camera angle was in my head and everything's done. You know, so when we get around to doing it, I'm not saying there's not a bit of flapping about, but pretty much it's edited, it's done. So to actually then see that and hear the layers that the music gives it, oh, I'll be quite honest with you, I think I even had a tear. I was just so overwhelmed with it. It just hit 
Uh, and like with, uh, well, obviously you don't know the background or the history, but working with Dave, even when we did the last movie, Dave would send me stuff, and it's like Dave was sat in my skull listening to me. And he just, just knew, because he came from the, watched the same movies as me, it's a love for the same sort of stuff. It's like an unspoken word. Honestly, I'd say to Dave, well... Well, where do you want to go with this? And I say, well, let's, let's go, go kind of day of violence this, but let's go a bit grittier. Let's go. I don't need to say. And then all this music's coming through, and it was everything I'd ever imagined, but maybe couldn't even get out in words because I'm not. I don't. I can't talk music. I just. Oh, I like that sound. I like. So it, you know, Dave's music fits it like a glove, and it just gives it the extra thirty percent it needed. And um, yeah, uh, you know. It, it, it's, it's not, not one, one person, person just because you write, produce, and direct. Every, every single person, person. It, it, all these, these guys, guys here, here, you know, one, one of them weren't in the movie. There'd, there'd be a, a hole, you know. And okay, you can fill holes with other people, but is it as good? No, I got, you know, I got to work the perfect cast that I wanted and crew. It's like a family unit with the crew. Um, there's new new people join all the time, but there's the regulars, they're the people that've been there since the year dot and. Uh, you know, you just rock up and you know what you're doing. You don't have to have those big discussions before you know it. Oh, the lights are set up and oh, the track's out and okay, let's shoot. <laughs> you know, it doesn't always go like that, obviously, but um, when it does, it, it works like a dream and that is something about, you know, core people. You use them over and over and over again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, we've, yeah, we've had, had that, that before. before. <coughs> yeah. I mean, I mean sometimes, sometimes I'm, I think the longest break is, um, yeah, eight, eight months. months. Money ran out. There was, you know, I'm bashing a brick wall. Um, yeah, it's, I could not fathom where this money was going to come from. I, I had exhausted everything. And as I say, I don't know, by some absolute luck, um, money came in from Game of Thrones. So, uh, yeah, we're very lucky to be able to finish it, but, but uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, that's the intention. I mean, obviously, you, you, you've you got what you've got. It's what do you do with it? How do you shoot it? And testament to John Raggett, who sat up the top there, our DOP. It's the third movie I've done with John. Um, you know, everyone, John just turns a blank wall, makes it, look, you know, a million bucks, you know, we, we do what we can, and uh, you know, I, I and I would like to think, you know, yeah, it, it looks a lot more than that. Um, eh? 33 now, is it? <laughs> but yeah, no, thank you very much. I mean, it's, your feedback's been great, yeah, um, and it's been very positive, and uh, I can go back to Southampton tonight and uh, sleep easy, I think. So, um, yeah, no, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Spencer and Romford, for that. I'm aware that everyone has to get back, and I know like, some of you have come quite a distance. I've got one last question for you. Mm. So, I saw uh, references to Tondo Rosso. Mm -hmm. Who saw her die? What have you done to prolong the tenebrae? What's your favourite gel? Oh. Um, I'd, I'd say, say straight off the top of my head, of my head uh, it might be a bit cliche, but, but I, 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 I got a soft spot for Tenebrae. Yeah, yeah, the bit when he, uh, uh, Gemma gets, gets grabbed and, and then smacked up against, against the wall, that was my little homage to Tenebrae. But there's so many, I, I, you know, I used to have hundreds of them. I, I don't have them so much now because they're all on VHS tape, uh, sadly. Um, but yeah, let's stick with Tenebrae. The uh, um, I'm obsessed with Leone. It's a bit sad, but the the abduction scene in the um, in the uh, garage when the four guys walk in. That's my little homage to Once Upon a Time in the West when Fonda and the four guys come out of the brush and walk up to the house. There's lots of little moments like that, little quick shots, you know. Um, the whole Je uh, Jeff Stewart sequence and Giovanni when when he gets the machete in the face. We kind of we shot, shot that mainly on eight on eighty five and fifty lenses, and, and, and to me, because of the 
the hats and that kind of factory background. That was the most spaghetti western you ever get to unless we go to Al Maria and make a western. Uh, that would be my next movie if I could get the money um, to go to Al Maria and actually shoot on the sets because I've been over there a couple of times. They're all still there. All the Carlo Simi sets from the from the DA are there. And you can shoot there. So the right amount of money, I'd love to go and do a western. Ah, shadow fire. It's all about a town that sits under the um, a mountain. So as the sun goes down, it's covered in shadow and it looks like fire because it's orange. And um, I started writing that back in the late 90s. It's something I never finished, but it's something I'd always want to do. But, you know, very brutal, peck and par, squib-tastic western with um, great Almeria spaghetti western local, you know, uh, <laughs> getting all those mountain views that you've seen in over 800 <laughs> Italian westerns. You know, never say never on the action. If the money come up, I'm sure we could coerce Nick into doing another Final Fury. They just, you know, reanimate him in a morgue or something, and we go to Colombia and take on the Colombians or something. I don't know, but <laughs> might need a couple of million for that one. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, I hope you all have a safe journey back. And well done on what you've delivered here today. All of you. And uh, we look forward to seeing where this goes next. Yeah, thank you for having us.